Hi, everybody. It is May 2nd, 2019. We are screwed. We are so screwed. Why? Because not enough parents and teachers stood up and fought against Common Core. Now we have generations of the young who literally do not know how to read or write. So, when you have generations of young people who have been so unbelievably dumbed down, when they have been put through a system that has uh, Common Core, it, it, the officially sanctioned systematic systemic abuse of children, they become young adults who literally do not know how to read, to write, to think properly, to critically think. They are common. They are not individualized human beings with a strength of character, a moral core. And that human being will not be a benefit for society. The individual will actually be a detriment. See, we need healthy young adults. When you don't have very many of them, your society continues to go down. And that's exactly what we are facing. I'm going to go through uh, some of what is on the Newman Report, uh, the Freedom Project Media, which I do hope that you bookmark and you check out. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you some of the articles that are on the Newman Report. And this is Alex Newman from the New American, who, and the New American I have recommended very often that people bookmark. Unfortunately, uh, I see the New American on the Trump uh, wagon. But again, that does not mean that they are not putting out an awful lot of information that is the truth and that we all need. So I still recommend the New American, even though they are seemingly Trump supporters, but, well, what can you do? Uh, now, Trump has not done nothing about Common Core. Nothing. He campaigned, I'm going to get rid of Common Core. And he hasn't. Okay. North Carolina wants 40% to be a passing grade for public schools. 40% considered to be a passing grade. Hey, well, they've been doing it for years, but they have now apparently a new bill working on new legislation to make that permanent. Oh, well, if they've been doing it already, why do they have to make it permanent? Um, I have a subscriber who I've talked to very often and she is a, uh, a professor of college students. And she tells me they don't know how to write. They do not know how to write. Do you know how scary that is? Do you understand that children in college, well, young adults, they're not children, if they don't know how to write, that means they don't know how to read. And that means we have a whole lot of people who will not be a, uh, a benefit to society. That's just the way it is. That means we have a very screwed up, yeah, stupid society. That was the point, that was the intention, and we all understand that.
but it but it truly is remarkable to see what is happening to these kids today and you know I, I do have some young subscribers and I have to hand it to their parents that they were able to escape this detrimental indoctrination that is taking place it means they had good parenting why are we not talking about parenting parenting is one of the biggest factors in why we are living the nightmare that we are living but not to digress reality of grade inflation is now well established throughout our country one teacher in Florida was even fired for objecting to the grade lunacy they're firing teachers the teachers that need <laughs> tenured in public schools the teachers that we absolutely need they fire this is a deliberate program to literally destroy Americans and I will link below to all of these articles what is this oh big pharma funds Indiana indoctrination and drugging of children under the guise of social emotion uh, emotional learning and counseling big government and big pharma funded activists are teaming up in Indiana to indoctrinate screen data mine manipulate and drug school children after obtaining documents on this scheme using Freedom of Information Act the Indiana Lib Liberty Coalition exposed the plot they are launching a statewide education initiative to let parents know what is happening in the schools I have said numerous times and I'm so thoroughly done with people who say well what are we supposed to do okay you're an adult so start thinking about what is happening in your own community and start thinking of ways in which you can become involved to try to stem the tide of this destruction especially the destruction of the children I have said numerous times parents you have got to find out what is happening in your children's schools and community members have to find out what's happening in their town council what's happening at their state government the legislation that they have passed that they're getting ready to pass because very much of what is taking place in government you don't know unless you do the research yourself so anybody who's sitting back not doing anything I'm sorry you don't have any right to complain about what is taking place in your community what is taking place in your child's school you need to be proactive and yeah the cat's out of the bag as I say we all know that our government works against creating a healthy society hence the reason why adults need to get proactive the saga begins in 28, uh, 2016 when the big pharma funded Lilly endowments counseling initiative bribed government schools to set up social emotional comprehensive counseling programs more mental health providers on school children while gathering all sorts of private and highly sensitive data on children data being gathered by schools and companies such as Navions I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it but these companies uh, provide our government with these uh, data mining services uh, through surveys counselors computer systems and more is then used to determine what sort of interventions to use to modify the students behavior the Indiana Liberty Coalition suggested such intrusive violations may be used to target for instance Christian children who do not accept the so-called LGBTQ agenda among other controversial political and social goals so there's also a tremendous amount of information um, in each article of Alex Newman's so here Lily endowment however pretends it's just an innocent effort
to help children. Yeah, Lily, the, the, uh, the maker of Prozac that has literally, Prozac itself radically changed our country. When suddenly you saw, and I saw it, all, my friends, oh, Prozac, Prozac gave me, gave me who I really am. A drug gave you who you really are. Wow. Well, Prozac and all of the many psychiatric medications out there, that is officially sanctioned drugs. That's it. It's street drugs, officially sanctioned, to get a whole lot of Americans on these drugs, adults and children, so that your mind is so thoroughly warped, you will not be a benefit to society. No matter what you do, you will not be a benefit because your reality has been skewed. And when your reality is skewed, then how do you see reality for what it is? Well, getting these children on drugs, well, I'd say probably 90% will become adults addicted to psychiatric medications, and voila, you've got patients for life. That's, that's a lot of profit for these companies. Um, it, it's scary what is happening. So Indiana Education Bill seeks mental health control of all kids. So what happened in Indiana is also happening in other states. They might have different names for these uh, programs, different names for the legislation. But this is what came out of that big government, big pharma. Hey, we've got an initiative here. Uh, Lily, we just want to help kids. So Indiana, they proposed legislation, and it has been passed and is waiting to be signed, based on my research. I don't think it has been signed into law yet, but it is draconian education legislation to further erode parental rights and gather all sorts of mental health data on children, among other controversial elements. It's making its way through the legislature now. Uh, and since this article, it has been passed. It's just waiting for a signature. Indiana parents, you better get on it. It's a non-elected commission. The non-elected commissions. How do you hold them accountable? Very hard. Very often, what you see are these commissions, but you don't even know who is sitting on these commissions, and they dictate to the schools what the schools have to do. All right, this is thoroughly destroying children. So the non-elected commission will be established to set up a social, emotional, and behavioral plan for Indiana children. The commission will also define normal. <laughs> oh, with those outside of the norm being targeted for government interventions, there will also be ongoing needs assessments to determine what services to voice on children and parents. It furthers government meddling in the lives of children from birth through age 22. When do you become adults today? Didn't Obama, Obamacare, part of the legislation is that parents have to continue health insurance with children who are like 25 years of age? This is part of the infantilization of of Americans. Now Americans, they just never grow up. So it furthers government meddling in the lives of children from birth through age 22. All children will be routinely screened for mental health issues with schools becoming de facto mental health institutions as if they're not now. Uh, Indiana activists slammed the provisions as another step toward governmental control from cradle to grave. 
This bill puts the ownership of children in the hands of government schools through the guise of mental health and safety. That coming from Mary Black, who's a veteran educator uh, in Indiana, education activist. She spent four decades teaching children in the classroom. She said the mandated mental health clinics in the schools will be used to, to indoctrinate children with the government established right and wrong. Unlike God's laws, which never change, and they don't, a natural law, God's law, uh, inherent to every human being placed on earth, uh, well, you got to break that down and replace it with government law. And boy, has that been successful. But Black said the government's laws and views will continually change. Thus, the emphasis on the social-emotional wellness in the bill ensures that the necessary flexibility and adaptability and group consensus will be indoctrinated into each children and lead to the ultimate goal of those pushing this bill, citizens who are conditioned to do as they are told, not to be who they are, not to individuate, not to, um, you're told you're mentally ill. Look, this is in part to get more and more children on these medications and um, take away parental rights. It's important for uh, Indiana parents to get involved in the battle to stop the attack. This bill is anti-child because the child's God-given independence is taken, taken from him or her, and they have so many methods in which to take away the independence from a child. Now, a child, a child is dependent on the parent, and it's the, the healthy parent's job that we have so few of uh, to instill an independence in that child, to um, facilitate that child to become their authentic self to individuate into who they are as individuals. None of that is taking place in this country, except for in the homes where children are being raised by very healthy parenting, healthy parents. All right, so I will link below to the Senate bill here in Indiana and the votes on the bill. You can check out who voted. Oh, my God. Um, 21 yay and 20 nay, and here the committee vote, 13 yay, 10 yay, and no nays. All right, so yeah, get involved. Now, I'm going to link below to Dr. Duke Pestis. Uh, his talks on Common Core, I had posted his videos on Kafka Winston World. I'm not sure if I posted any on this channel, but yeah, you. if you have a parent, if you are a parent with a child in a public school and you are not informing yourself about what that child is going through Monday through Friday for hours and hours and hours at a time, you need to become a responsible parent. So... Check out what Dr. Duke Pesta has to say on Common Core, and it's destroying your children. Now, why millions of kids can't read, and what better teaching can do about it? In 2015, only 56% of third graders were scoring proficient on the state reading test. Wow. Across the country, millions of kids are struggling. According to the National Assessment of Educational Progress, 32% of 4th graders and 24% of 8th graders aren't reading at a basic level. And these statistics are true. And guess what? In, I would say, the UK, Scotland, maybe Ireland, I don't know, but I certainly know the UK, this common core, they have a different term for it, but it's happening, you know, to those children. But there, we are, we are now just 
rapidly sliding down the ranking in terms of education. Where, where are we? Uh, ranked for Western countries, I think 36. Is something wrong here? Now, we were also dumbed down, my generation, the baby boomers, but nothing like what is happening now. Nothing like what is happening now. And when you think, this is child abuse, I'm sorry. It is, it is systematic, systemic child abuse occurring in public schools. It, you cannot deny that when you have Common Core, and if you know a little bit about Common Core and how that was rolled out, untested, states being bribed, we're going to take all of that funding away from you if you don't adopt Common Core. It was never tested. It was never tested to see what the results would be. It was rolled out immediately. And now the results are coming in and we've got children who literally are so destroyed by the adults, by the adults teaching them, everyone involved in education, and their parents who have not fought for something better for their children. Because this has been going on for years. It's been going on for years. I know teachers who don't care. They get their paycheck. That's all they care about. One excuse that educators have long offered to explain poor reading performance is poverty has nothing to do with it. Has everything to do with the parents. Many students at the wealthier schools, well, it was found out that they're not reading too well as well. So what's going on? It's not about poverty. It's about adults who surround these children who are so unbelievably messed up themselves and they having not done any work to resolve their own issues have, well, a great ability to just keep passing on the trash that they are to children. Sorry to use such harsh language, but I'm tired of adults who don't care and act like children themselves, have no sense of responsibility towards children. All right, you can read more in terms of how they're teaching kids. I mean, my God, here at a professional development day, at one of the uh, a district in um, Pennsylvania, uh, at one of the lowest performing elementary schools, this um, Kim Harper, the new director of literacy, she went to this professional development day. The teachers were talking about how students should attack words in a story. When a child came to a word she didn't know, the teacher would tell her to look at the picture and guess. The most important thing was for the child to understand the meaning of the story, not the exact words on the page. So if a kid came to, word, to a word horse and said house, the teacher would say that's wrong. But then if the kid said it was a pony, it would be right. Because a pony and a horse, well, they mean the same thing, and they don't mean the same thing. Um, well, if this is how you're teaching kids to read, look at the picture and figure it out and guess, what happens when kids don't have pictures? <sighs> My God. U.S. faces national reading crisis. Education Week admits America's staggering illiteracy crisis. Spoil alert, it is the reading instruction 
That is the problem. We have a illiterate crisis here in the great U.S. of A. Very good article. Common Core contributor criticizes FedEd after reading Disaster. Disastrous reading program. Common Core National Standards. Dr. Louisa Motes, one of the contributors, contributors to Common Core, is criticizing the U.S. Department of Education's increasingly detrimental role in education as well. Despite serious concerns, the internationally renowned reading expert expressed optimism that the truth was coming out and that positive changes may be forthcoming, and I'm sorry, I don't see them. Unless parents begin to get involved. All parents. It is your responsibility. You get rid of Common Core. But Trump is going to do it, Carol. Oh, okay. Well, Trump hasn't done it, and for two years, your children have been abused. Dr. Moats slammed the early literacy component of the Obama-backed national standards for being deeply flawed and contributing to a national reading crisis. The foundational skills that enable kids to learn to read in the first place were relegated to the back of the document, which I thought was very strange, adding that the sight words uh, mandated in kindergarten were among the many problematic elements, and I think the sight words were, hey, look at the picture. The disaster was rolled out nationwide without even testing. Textbook publishers rushed to align their materials with the flawed Common Core, and Dr. Moat said, I thought, oh my goodness, this is really bad. You have to test it out first, see if you get better results, see whether it translates into higher rates of achievement in the world is not that sensible. Dr. Motes was invited to work on the foundational section of Common Core. She had no idea what ensued, that what ensued would take place. I was imagining out of my naivete that this document would be floated out by the Department of Education or National Gover Governors Association as a kind of North Star or guideline for states wanting to improve their own standards. But I had no idea that what they were going to do was direct publishers to change everything, appropriate money towards Common Core, get it out as soon as possible. The standards had not even been debated or tried. I thought, oh my goodness, this is really misconceived. When the state of New York said everyone would have to pass it, I thought, this is foolishness. I seldom see any federally funded initiative that works the way it's intended. It made me question, what is the role of our U.S. Department of Education? How can it be more or most constructive? What it is doing now is appalling to me. The U.S. Department of Education needs to allow states to do things their own way. Across the world, ministries of education function that way, and they don't try to hit people over the head with imperatives that are unrealistic. So sometimes our institutions are very constructive and sometimes less so. All right, I, I highlighted that in a different color to just say Americans get it, Dr. Motes get it. Get it. This is all deliberate. It is planned to destroy this country, destroy Americans. Please begin to see clearly what is taking place. And we cannot, we cannot give anybody a pass. No more excuses. This is deliberate. We know the results already. Children who, they can't subtract basic, you know, simple equations. I mean, it's in part also technology, but Common Core, this is what is taking place. We are now in crisis. We've been in crisis for a very, very long time, and I don't see the appropriate response 
that matches the crisis. Most people just walk around like, hey, yo, oh, yeah, we got some problems, but everything's cool. No, nothing is cool. Nothing is cool. So we've got to, you know, it, it's almost like people are programmed also to be very nice and to be very trusting. And well, that's where we went wrong. You know, the 1969, that New World Order insider, Dr. Day, that uh, the transcript from Dr. Dunnigan, who remembered this lecture by Dr. Day in 1969 where Dr. Day started, you will not record this, you will not have pens, you will not have pencils or paper to take any notes. You are just to listen to what is going to be taking place in the United States over the decades. And one of the things Dr. Day said, people are too trusting. We are too trusting and that we trust liars repeatedly uh, there's something wrong with us, and we need to change to meet this crisis. So yeah, after six years had passed, one of the key behind-the-scenes figures in Common Core, David Libin, contacted Dr. Motes and acknowledged that she was absolutely right about what was going to happen with the reading fiasco. He admitted that teachers do not know how to teach reading properly and there are no classroom materials for teaching crucial foundational skills. All of that is causing children to fail at a great rate. Wow, what have we produced here? All right, well, uh, parents, you, you've got to pick up the slack. You've got to sit down with your children and read. Don't just all sit there staring at your cell phones. You have to teach your children to read. The best thing that could happen is parents, pull your children from these schools. Do not allow them to go back to these public schools, homeschool, because public schools now, they're not only indoctrination centers, they are centers in which our government is traumatizing them, programming them to be stupid robots for the elite, confusing them. You talk about, talk about psychological torture. That's what public schools are now. So of course Obama administration never should have bribed and bludgeoned state governments to accept untested ridiculous common core standards. Now as the scale of the reading crisis becomes clear with millions of children handicapped for life, it is time to hold those responsible accountable. Hey, Americans, let's start changing and hold people accountable. You hold those teachers accountable. You know, so many people just, you know, it's the soldiers, it's military and police, the order followers, order followers are all over. Teachers are order followers abusing children. And yes, because they followed the order, they are the ones responsible for the abuse. Can I say it more clearly? Now, children do not have to be handicapped for life. And yes, I will say that I am uh, a testament to you can be really screwed up as a kid, you can learn nothing, and then teach yourself how to read, how to write, but it takes an awful lot of work. And parents, if you're not doing that for your children, I'm sorry to say you should never have had children. So, government to re-educate kids of right-wing parents. Wow. Germany. Throwback to evil ideas from Germany's National Socialist Nazi days. German authorities helped publish a pamphlet advocating the re-education of children whose parents disagree with the regime's official 
ideology among the ideas that are verbatim opposition to general gender theory, the sexualization of children, and mass immigration. Common Core teaches about climate change, how we all have to be global citizens. This is taking place in all Western countries. Yes, it is a deliberate plan to reshape the world under one government, United Nations, and everybody is to be common. No, no um, cultural pride, nothing. So, it is very upsetting to see we're in 2019 and still they roll this stuff out. So-called education must help combat right-wing populism. That's according to the German government. And what they're going to be doing is detecting thought crimes by parents. Wow, parents with attitudes the state deems unacceptable can be sniffed out. In particular, they can be detected through the use of seemingly harmless words, which stem, however, from the jargon of the new right. <laughs> yeah, they create these categories. Uh, they're so artificial, but anybody who doesn't go along with what government wants, then you're on the right. Oh, boy. Okay, so, uh, parents with attitudes the state deems unacceptable can be sniffed out. In particular, they can be de detected through the use of seemingly harmless words that children speak. However, from the jargon of the new right, and which imply a deeply misanthropic uh, attitude. Mis oh, God, Carol. Well, examples of warning signs that children may come from a racist or right-wing family. One involves a brother and sister who seem especially obedient and have no so-called disciplinary problems. The siblings in question also display trend. Um, traditional gender roles, with the sister wearing dresses and braids and learning needlework at home while the boy is physically being strongly challenged and drilled. And Okay, well, anything, what, what used to be normal is now to be re-educated. Now, another example involves a mother coming to school to complain that her son was dressed up as a girl and had fingernails painted at school. Okay, re-educate. This is what they're doing in Germany. Please bookmark um, parents. With your young children in public school, you've got to bookmark the Newman Report. Snopes lies about California's plan to teach five-year-olds transgenderism. New York Times preparing hit piece on Christian education. Facebook back community schools fail big. European court Germany can keep terrorizing homeschoolers. California wants to teach kindergartners. There are 15 genders. Common Core's terrible reading program being exposed nationally. Um, teacher fired for using correct gender pronouns. United Nations exploits autistic child to promote climate scam. Uh, there's so many great articles, and yeah, you can find out what's happening in our public schools. Unbelievable. School seeks to destroy male teacher for not watching girls shower. Teacher shows school tricked autistic kids into transgenderism. Government threatens to shut down Christian schools. Public school helps child get sex change without parental approval. State education rankings exposed as total fraud. John Taylor Gatto passes away. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. Passed away in November. All right, I will link below to everything. John, thank you for all that you have done.
Man, oh man, this man was on top of it. He was a, a very distinguished public school teacher. You know, receiving that award, the, uh, whatever the award is, like the best teacher of the year in New York City public schools, over and over again. And he came out speaking about what the, the, the travesty of our public school system. Rest in peace. All links are below.